Hello, everybody. Um, just wanted to stop in and introduce myself. Um, my name is Adrienne Hall, and I am the faculty led and events coordinator at the University of Alabama for the Education Abroad Office. Um, I will kind of be in and out answering any questions you might have, Education Abroad specific. Um, and I wanted to introduce Tyler Sasser, who's here um, to present about two different programs that he will be running, um, one to Italy and one to Japan. Um, so he will kind of go in depth about each one of those programs. I do want to remind everybody that this session will be recorded. So if um, you don't want your name or video up, just remember that. Um, but I will turn it over to um, Tyler now. Hey, so good evening, good, uh, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I hope you're well. All right, so this program uh, I've done uh, the last three years. Last year was canceled, but the first time I did it was uh, three years ago, and it's called Following Shakespeare. And the idea is to go to the different places where most of Shakespeare's plays take place. Now, this is going to sound like an English major course, but it absolutely is not an English major course. Last year, I had 12 students, and I think one was an English major and two were an English minor. Um, the reasons why people are interested and enjoy this trip um, is because you get credit for English 207, which fulfills the L or the H. So if you, if you have already taken a 200 level literature class, uh, you can still take this and for the other, if you took one for the literature, you can take one for the humanities. And then an upper level English course uh, as well, um, is offered as well. If you are, are an English major, um, it's a course that is required. If you are not an English major, then it's a course that uh, would be just an elective for you. And also, if you're in the Honors College, uh, I teach in the Honors College, so I can offer the 300-level uh, class as an HBC, as an Honors by Contract, um, if you are interested in that. I'm not exactly sure what the cost is going to be. I've overestimated a, a bit here. Uh, but it's probably going to be between five and six thousand. Uh, I would know more within the next month or so, but um, that's a little bit more than what it's been in recent years. Uh, so hopefully it would be uh, be below that. Um, and this includes the tuition for the six hours, all of the in-country travel, and there's a lot of in-country travel on this trip. Um, all the museum and entrance fees, all the excursions, all the hotel rooms, all of your breakfasts and two larger uh, meals at the beginning and at the end. The play, uh, the, uh, the program begins in Venice. So we start in the Northeast corner and we study Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice and Othello the Moor of Venice. And then we visit the places that are famous for Venice and also famously associated with those Verona um, for I think two nights where Romeo and Juliet takes place and we will visit the Capulet Castle. We will see where the historical Juliet is buried uh, in addition to some famous churches that are in uh, Verona. Um, then we're off to Florence and I think we're in Florence for about eight or nine days. We spend the most time in Florence um, and we read. We don't have a Shakespeare play in Florence but we have uh, several of the World Lit One texts that we're reading. So we spent a lot of time talking about um, the early Renaissance, that movement that it started in terms of the art and in terms of literature. All of the things that are famous in Florence are included in the trip. So you will see Michelangelo's David, you will see the Uffizi Gallery, which is I think the second largest um, art museum in the world. It's the largest Renaissance art museum in the world. Um, and we will see the Duomo, which is this building. I um, mean, you will have an opportunity to, to climb, uh, if you wish, to the top of that. Then we will take a day trip to Pisa. Uh, we will absolutely learn nothing on this day trip. It is a day for Instagram and Instagram only, where you find different ways creatively to try and knock over or prop up uh, the tower. Um, so we spend a couple of the hours in Pisa. 
This year we'll be seeing a small town as well. I think this is one of the biggest draws for this program is that the big three, the Florence, Venice, Rome, are included in the program. But we also see some smaller towns like Verona, like Pisa, like Ravenna. And it's usually those smaller towns that students like the most. So you get an opportunity to see very different and different sized places. Then we're off to Rome. Uh, so we'll read Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, the famous Roman epic, the Aeneid. We'll read some Roman mythology. We'll read parts of the uh, Christian New Testament. Uh, these are the, is the place where Caesar was um, more than likely. This is where he was assassinated. So you'll get to see uh, this as well as the other ruin um, in the city. And all the things that you would think would be included in the trip are included in the trip. So it tour of the Roman Forum, the Roman Forum being, uh, if you go to Google Images and you type Roman ruins, everything that comes up is going to be the Roman Forum. Uh, you'll get to see the, uh, the Colosseum, you'll have a tour of the Colosseum, um, uh, the, your vi visit Vatican City will go into the Sistine Chapel, you'll go into the uh, um, uh, St. Paul, St. Peter's Cathedral, the last couple of years, a group has wanted to attend a mass at St. Paul's um, and we at St. Peter's and we've done that. So all that's included. Then we'll take a night train to Sicily. I think that uh, Alabama has more programs at Italy than any other country, but this is the only one that goes this far south. And we take a night train that's about nine and a half hours long, 10 hours. You have your own or you and two or three others will have your own uh, um, sleeping compartment. Um, it's a lot of fun to do one time and uh, you wake up and we're in Sicily and we will be going to uh, either Terramina or uh, Terracusa this year. Uh, the last couple of years we've gone to Terramina and studied Shakespeare's play The Winner's Tale and then also The Odyssey. So the end of the trip after seeing the big cities, the Romes and the Florence and all that, we end in a small town and I mean our hotel the first year I did it is right up here I think it was this building or this building was was our hotel um, and that's the end of the program so these pictures are just the uh, what will your summer look like portion of the PowerPoint it's just images from this program um, in the past going on the gondola trip uh, there are several free days um, in, in the program, so you may want to go to uh, Cinque Terre, go on a hike to these five villages on the Amalfi Coast. Um, here we had, uh, we had a picnic overlooking Florence. Uh, some students went to Pompeii um, on one of their free days just outside of Rome. Uh, of course, the, the famous fountain in Rome and having some, here's Emily having some coffee uh, in, in Rome. Uh, so. It, as you're being told this year, you'll need to email me. I'm not able to take your name, so just send me an email, mtsasser at ua.edu. Uh, if you want this PowerPoint or if you have any questions or if you want to Zoom, uh, there's my email. This is how you will uh, contact me if you have any questions about this. I think the biggest selling point for this trip um, and what students at the end of the trip always say is that uh, they got to go to a variety of places, but it was a significant amount of time at a variety of places. So we're going to go to Venice, Florence, Rome, Sicily, but we don't spend 12 hours in Venice. We spend several days at each of these places. So it's enough to where you actually see and experience these vastly different Italian cities, but you also get the diversity um, you get, it's not as if you're spending three weeks in, in one town. Um, the trip will probably run summer two, uh, sometime in the month of July is what it has been in the past and what I'm looking for this year. All right, Tyler, it looks like we have a few questions. Okay. Um, the first one was about cost and I kind of answered that saying we don't know the exact cost until um, the end of October, beginning of November but last year's costs are posted for the Italy trip. Um, the second set of questions is also for your Italy trip and it's from Catherine. She wants to know um, what the assignments will be and how does the credits work? How does the grading work? So I, 
I promise you absolutely that even though there's a lot of reading, uh, that it, it's completely manageable and I am realistic with the, with the text. Um, there, but it, it will run very similarly to a traditional in-country class. Um, that a typical day will be class from like nine to 12 with two breaks. So like kind of 80, 90 minutes break, 80, 90 minutes break. Um, uh, and then maybe another another hour, but usually classes from like nine to twelve um, or ten to one, something like that. And then we break for lunch. And half the days uh, there's an excursion for the afternoon, and half the days are free afternoons to do the reading. Um, with both of these classes, uh, there's a lot of poetry and a lot of drama. And I think that reading poetry and reading drama is a lot easier to do in person, in class. So since your question was about, uh, um, since your question was about, uh, oh my goodness, about Italy, uh, we might, class might be, let's read outside, outside the Capulet Castle, Romeo and Juliet in the next two hours. That could be class time. Uh, the assignments, um, there was about five two-page assignments, four to five two-page assignments, and usually they are some sort of version of like a, a journal entry, a journal entry in response to uh, something that we have done. So uh, we go to the Uffizi Gallery and the, and the question, and this will be the same for Japan. Um, in terms of the assignments, same, same, same thing. So we visit and maybe I say, uh, discussed four paintings that you saw at the Uffizi Gallery. What was interesting? What did you learn? What did you notice? What sort of pattern did you see? And then there's one longer paper that is required in that 300 level class. It's five to seven pages or six to eight pages. I have that assignment due a week after class ends, after we return. If you want to do it on your free days, you can. If you want to take an incomplete, an I, and turn it in a week later, that's fine as well. There is a midterm. One of the classes will be a midterm. It's exactly like um, a midterm would be. Quotation, identification, explication, short answer. And then there are reading quizzes, a handful of reading quizzes. Lowest one is dropped, but it is absolutely manageable. Do you have any... Um opportunities for this to move to online if for some reason COVID is still prevalent um, next year? Do you have any opportunities to pivot to online? I did. I taught the 300 level class uh, online uh, less in July 20. I taught it to replace the course because students needed it. Um, so I was able to do that. And, and far, as far as the 200 level classes, uh, even in normal times, the English department offers a handful of um, 200 level classes online and in person. Um, I don't know if I would, I probably would not be the one teaching it in that case, but I would be teaching the 300 level class online again, if this happened again. Awesome, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? When do we have to commit by? Um, do you want to talk about that or? So, uh, you can tell, I'll say what I've done in the past. I'll tell you what has happened in the past because the trip, the Italy trip, uh, is pretty popular and has filled fairly quickly the last two times. So that date is maybe more important than the actual last minute date as, as you asked. Um, what has happened in the past, uh, is I have 10 to 12 people is it. And I have usually had about eight to nine committed uh, in the fall semester. Um, this past year, I had all 12 before the winter break, um, before December 19 committed for summer 20. Um, I don't think for summer two, I don't think everything has to be paid and ready to go until sometime in April. I'm not sure about uh, the May, which is when, um, the Japanese one would run. So Adrian can probably give better dates. Than yeah. That. So what we um, classify as committing to a program is putting down a $250 deposit. 
to the program. That kind of holds your spot in the program. Um, all of our programs for next year, we will drop a program for COVID reasons before any non-refundable cost happen. So you don't have to worry about putting your 250 down, then COVID strikes again and you don't get your money back. We will refund that money. Um, but what we typically say is we have to have that 250 to dollar deposit about a hundred days before departure. Um, that's kind of when all of the decisions are kind of made. If that answers your question, Megan, it's kind of flexible. <laughs> all right. We have time for maybe one or two more questions. Sorry, when did you say that applications would open up for the Italy trip? So applications, um, we actually have the general application open right now and any student can go ahead and um, apply to the general application. If you go on our website and hit that big uh, magnifying glass and just type in general, you can go ahead and apply to that and in a drop down menu, it'll ask you which program you're interested in. Um, and we can go ahead and move you over automatically to the program that you're interested in as soon as it opens. But most applications directly um, will not be open until mid-November. But we will, we will move all students um, on the back end so you don't have to worry about moving yourself or um, waiting for when that application comes open, you can go ahead and apply to the general app and we will move you. And we'll also give um, the directors your email information in case they do um, like a lunch and learn, which we're not sure how those will run this semester, but, um, or if they do an information session or something like that, we will make sure they have your information. Thank you. And if I can add to that, I uh, require an interview um, as an additional step. It'll say that uh, when you apply. Um, so it is very much first come, first serve, but I also want to meet the people that I'm maybe going to spend a month with somewhere. Um, the interview is not stressful. It's low key. It's I, it's, I want to look at you. I want to meet you. Um, we, this would just be through Zoom. I want to meet you. and. Uh, make sure that you're um, interested, learn about what are your interests, interests are in the program and make sure you're, it's not just spring break or something for you is really all I'm looking for. So, I mean, it, it's not a, it's not something that you would have to dress up and bring six copies of your resume or anything like that, though people have done that. Um, but yeah, that would be an additional step. The interview is 15, 20 minutes, just conversation. I just wanna meet you before we get in the country. When you say like you're going to move the application, like if you apply before, does that mean we don't have to apply again? Correct. You will just have that one application and I will swap the application in the background for you where you don't have to apply again. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, thank you all for coming in. Um, it was nice to see all of y'all and to learn about the two awesome trips. If you have any questions, feel free to email um, Tyler or the Education Abroad office. I did drop his email address right here in the chat. It is mtsasser at ua.edu. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Hope to hear from you. Bye.